Afternoon YouTube, welcome to my channel, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm about to talk about the road to infinity wars. Is it a challenge? Well, something big ass fans do. I know not everybody's doing it, but I'm doing it. And a couple of my friends are doing it. And we enjoying the hell out of it. Basically reminiscing and makes the movie hyper in our mind. Because we like seeing everything come together again to this epicness that we're gonna see on April 27. Uh, I'm gonna talk about every movie I've watched so far um, at the end of phase two like I said like re-watching them. I don't know how many times I've watched each one of these movies but I've watched them a lot but I'm just gonna write like say a quick thing about each one of them because it's a fantastic franchise what can I say. First one on the list Nama Uno, you know what I'm saying? I know another language. What? Iron Man. The movie that started it all with Robert Downey Jr. Guess we should call him Tony Stark now because I can't differentiate between the real person and the character now. Because, yeah, I'm that geek level. Well, anyway, that movie is fantastic. Like, still my favorite Iron Man movie to date you know what I'm saying like solo Iron Man movie because I'll get to the other stuff anyway it's an amazing movie it's a great start like what I keep saying about franchises is that you need that Iron Man 1 moment like to launch it all like that perfect movie that nobody can take away like Batman Begins or Man of Steel or X-Men Apocalypse I know that's the last movie but that's the movie that felt like it was a good X-Men movie before they dropped Logan. I was like, I was like, damn, Fox really killing the third movie. It's like, what happens to the first one and the second one? Like, God damn. But yeah, it's a great, like, start a rocket ship taking off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then we come to the disappointing movie. Ah, I keep looking at this idiot. Anyway. The Incredible Hulk, 2018. No, eight, right? Why did I say 18? Psh, my mind right now. Anyway, The Incredible Hulk, the 2008 movie. Straight up sucks. Let's not be coy about it. The only thing cool about it I can really say is the Abomination and Hulk fight. Because Hulk hasn't had the Abomination and Hulk fight in the MCU since because that fight is legit just that it looks like a PS3 graphic type of fight but it was awesome in the streets of Harlem right yeah it was in Harlem where Luke Cage be rocking up you know what I'm saying where he's the king of Harlem or the protector whatever the fuck they call it yeah that's the only thing I, I found interesting about that movie the cast was hey because the woman that played Betty had this weird sexual soft voice that, oh, br Bruce. It was so weird. It was like, oh, so awkward. Oh my God. <laughs> you can tell I really watched these movies again and I kind of murdered them. So if I said I did not like it, I did not like it. The third one is Iron Man 2, 2010. I don't know why this movie gets so much hate. Some people are saying it's more of an Iron Man movie than a Tony Stark movie. I was like, Psh, well, Iron Man is in the title. And I'm like, duh. And I understand Whiplash is not the most compelling villain, but Justin Hammer did his justice. I mean, like, he took the villain ranks for me. He was impelling enough for me to be like, huh, Whiplash is kind of his minion who went rogue. I understand it, so I like that movie, and especially the War Machine and Iron Man team up at the end. That was a spectacle, and that's the best War Machine suit they've had so far. I kind of do like the Age of Ultron one, but kinda, not really, because the face mask is off. I don't like what they're doing with War Machine's face mask now. Like, it was cool when it looked like Iron Man's one, but then they were like, let's differentiate from Iron Man in total and make his face look square. I don't know who came up with that idea, but yeah. Then we got the other second best origin story of this franchise, which is Thor. I really like the 
opening sequence of Thor, like basically telling the origin of the place is from. I'm minusing the place, the part where he falls and he gets hit by the car and Jane Foster is like, uh, tries to help him, then they go to Asgard, show him growing up. I like it because those two kids that play young Thor and young Loki kind of looked like them so much. It's like, where did he find these people, you know what I'm saying? But I like the whole cockiness of Thor. The movie starts getting rocky when he loses his powers and goes to Earth and has to basically fall in love with an Earth girl who happens to be the one who found him, who happens to be studying the shit he came out of, who happens to be the key to kind of getting him home, then who happens to be missing him for the next two years in the other movie, but then did not move on, but was on a date she was about to move on when he decided to come back. But you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I really enjoyed that origin movie, but it wasn't the best well put together story. I can't say it's Iron Man 1, you know what I'm saying. Then Captain America, the first Avenger. The first time I watched this movie, I thought it was amazing. But after I've watched movies like Winter Soldier, I saw that, yo, Cap was lacking in the action sequences. Because the way they've changed Cap over the years makes the first Avenger look like child's play this is what i gotta say about that red scar was all right uh what else bucky was all right here the only positive i'll say was steve and agent carter's romance i was like god damn they're gonna give us one movie but they didn't but basically she was aged over 100 years for the next couple of times they showed her and then boom dead civil war ah savage then the big zero six the first avenger movie this movie was a spectacle it's when josh whedon was respected as a director you know what i'm saying like he created the biggest come together moment in cinema history in my opinion i think this movie was like still third on the highest grossing list that's how big it was i mean like this certified mcu fans i mean like diehard mcu fans that every time they drop a dc eu information they they like Psh, not better than the mcu they just that die hard this movie was amazing everybody got their screen time and people hate the fact that hawkeye was basically controlled the whole movie but i thought that's cool because of the fact that it made Hawkeye kind of badass because in other movies he's not that badass as he was here because he was getting eyes he was fucking up shield agents left and right until Natasha basically fucked his head up and made him remember who he was I was like why did you do it Natasha why why you don't you want to have all the fun but you know what I'm saying this was an amazing movie and we got Mark Ruffalo the Hulk we deserve like what can I say like, the only thing I hate about this movie, in actuality, is Captain America's suit. That shit garbage. Oh my god, that shit garbage. That's the end of phase one. Phase one in total was like... The first, the best first half of any franchise. Because DCEU is struggling first half wise. Because there's too many people talking over people. Like... I'll, I'll make a separate video about my thoughts about the DCEU anyway. Phase 2. We just start off with the third Iron Man installment. People hate this one because they're saying it's more Tony Stark than Iron Man. I was like, God damn, people make up your mind. You want more Iron Man? You want more Tony? Well, it's an Iron Man movie. You want more Iron Man or it's a Tony movie? I was like, Fuck, why can't Marvel balance it out? Because I see what they're saying, but it's like, really, is that really the reason you're going to hate the movie? Because I really enjoyed the movie. I liked Mark 42, but I wonder why he only used Mark 42 throughout the whole movie when he had a shitload of other suits just waiting for him. Because all he needed was Jarvis, and he had Jarvis the whole time. And I was like, come on, man. You had 42, no, 41 other suits, and... You are busy playing with the broken one. You let 
you and Rody go into that thing unarmed until it was too late and be like, huh, now I'm calling them the Calvary. I was like, come on, man. But I really enjoyed that movie. The only thing I didn't like about that movie was the switch of the Mandarin because I liked Trevor when he was all bad and stuff. Then out of nowhere, he was just this actor or whatever. I was like, come on, man. You're going to make the white dude the Mandarin? And he 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 definitely like dies the moment he claims the name. He's like, okay, you wanted it. I am the Mandarin. Then Pepper has a dope ass moment, which which she'll never have again in the movies. Then I heard that Robert Downey Jr. recently said Iron Man three is basically dedicated to Tony's love for Pepper. I was like, bullshit. Like I did not get that at all. They were having. I think it was more about Tony's PS. What's it called? PTSD, yeah. About the black hole in New York in Avengers. I was like, that's what I got out of that movie, not some undying love type of story. At the end, sure, it became that soppy dribble, but nah. Then we got the second installment of Thor, The Dark World, which. Visually, it's a great movie. I would say that. Like we saw, the graphics were better. He had a new look. You know, his hair was tied up. He looked handsome on some Chris Hemsworth shit. You know what I'm saying? Jane Foster was still there. Uh, Jane Foster's intern was better. I always liked the intern. I always like Selvig. That's his name, right? Like Doctor Selvig. I always liked him. But Jane. Suffered some technical difficulties. It was just bad. While it cut, I was still in Thor, Dark World. Now the third movie, Phase 2, Captain America Winter Soldier. Number one on my list, no more no. Ooh, no. Fuck, that was just such a tongue twister. This movie, I legit gave it an 11 out of 10. This movie's fantastic. The Russo brothers just changed the superhero movie game entirely and a lot of amazing movies came out of this amazing change they decided to implement it's a political action thriller superhero movie it was just groundbreaking the only problem I have with it was that moment where he was fighting the shell jet and he threw his shield to hit the side the wings and it went somewhere else then it came back I was like, what's the logic of that? Because I remember in an interview with uh, Chris Evans says they added the retractable shield thing in Age of Ultron, so it's impossible for that thing to come back and just do some other wall that they didn't show. That was the only issue I had with the movie. Everything else wants to show. Soldier was fantastic. Bucky shined. Like, that movie made me dislike Bucky in Civil War. He was too much victim wise to his bad name badassery in Civil War, I mean Winter Soldier. That movie's just fanta fantastic. The introduction of Falcon, the team up between Black Widow and Cap. Like, what else can I say? Alexander Pierce was amazing. Uh, Nick Fury had a dope-ass car sequence. Marion Hill had a dope-ass moment when she was at S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, also when she was the back of that van fight sequence between Cap and Winter Soldier next to that van. Oh, that was a moment where he was helping uh, Black Widow. That was an epic moment after Black Widow got shot in the shoulder. Like, you should really watch that movie if you haven't watched it. Like, that movie's fantastic and it's not underrated. People realize its value. The fourth one is Guardians of the Galaxy. Amazing movie, James Gunn. Like, he was the next wave of the change the MCU was taking. It was amazing. It was packed. Zoe Saldana, Dave Batista, Bradley Cooper, uh, Vin, Vin Diesel, even with his just three words. It was amazing. I mean, like the cast was phenomenal. The story was phenomenal. The villain was at par. It wasn't mediocre or anything. It was, he was what they needed. And we got that first glimpse of Thanos, Chris Pratt was his lovable self in Jurassic World and Magnific Magnificent Seven and Passengers. 
He's a great actor, funny, charismatic, charming, you know what I'm saying? So it's a Dana badass. That woman should get an award for her badass roles, man. She's amazing. Bradley Cooper should take the cup for this movie, though. That dude was just a voice actor for this movie. And he shined. He took all the shine. Like, Drex was the comic relief, the only moment. He, he wasn't. was those sad moments about his family and all that. But there was one moment about his family when Rocket was like, oh, my family and child died. And Groot was like, <gasps> that moment killed me. Also that we we a bunch of a-holes standing up. Just Rocket was phenomenal in this movie. The last two of phase two are some of the most underrated movies. I don't know why they get so much hate. At least online. Age of Ultron. I feel like Josh Reader was still a phenomenal director here. He started the Black Widow and Hulk romance which was interesting. He had two compelling characters. It's Quicksilver uh, and uh, Scarlet Witch and they were both amazing. I still hate that kid for being the reason Quicksilver died. He's the real villain of that movie and I wonder why Ultron gets so much hate. I think that, that villain is so underrated. He's not the best villain Killmonger just took that girl but he's totally up there like he's one of the greats like his unpredictability was phenomenal. We got the first glimpse of Claw, South African native. We got so many epic moments. They fought in Johannesburg, which I love. It was a hog buster and hog fight, which was phenomenal. What else can I say about this movie? Um, it was straight up awesome. Like, I don't know why he gets so much hate and why it's so underrated. We even got more Hawkeye and his family, his backstory. All of that was phenomenal. But then the sixth movie has to be Ant-Man. Ant-Man was just a well put together movie. Like, if you disagree with me, that's your opinion. But this movie is fantastic. Like, Scott Lang, it was like the father-daughter story. With his side of the family that Hank Pym and Hope. Hope was compelling. Scott was compelling, Hank Pym was compelling, then you got uh, Yellow Jacket just creepy as hell, murdering people left and right, basically straight up capitalizing on warfare like Tony was. He was like, if Tony continued his war path, that's what it would have been like, you know what I'm saying? It was an interesting story, we, we kind of saw a glimpse under all the atoms, we saw a bigger universe in the same common folk. Common folk also have a story like imprisoned for doing the right thing. Like also the storytelling, the whole backstory where he got his information back to back to back to back. It's it's an amazing franchise. Like I'm looking forward to starting phase um, three next week in a few days. Civil War. I haven't watched that movie this year yet. So I'm excited. T'Challa looks totally different. If I remember, I didn't rock the beard yet. The suit was amazing, he had some dope action scenes. So I'm excited Spider-Man gets introduced. Like even here in Ant-Man, you get the first teaser of him. Even Ant-Man made Falcon come up somewhat compelling, even though he still had to drop Cap's name in the whole thing. But either way, it was an amazing first two phases. I'm excited to get to the rest and get to the big April 27 date so we finally see that and said it's best anyway like and subscribe hope you like my review and my thoughts about the whole thing I'm about to go edit and post some of these things so, deuces